Hi, I'm Phyllis Lang, and welcome to Nightwear. This video demonstrates how to use a local horizon model when creating reports in Deep Sky Planner. Creating a model is described in another video. You might want to use a local horizon model if you have an observatory or some type of fixed location where you set up your telescope. The local horizon model feature requires extra computations, so you should use it only when needed. The local horizon model is used in two ways in Deep Sky Planner. First, the local horizon model can be used to compute object rise and set times for the local horizon rather than the standard flat horizon. Secondly, the local horizon model can be used to filter objects out of a report when the object is obstructed from view. We'll cover both cases in this video. For this demonstration, I've defined a local horizon model for a location called AA test. Here's how the model looks. And I'll adjust the screen so you can see the lower portion of the model. First, let's consider how a local horizon model affects rise and set times in a deep sky search report. For this example, we use a deep sky search report of the Messier objects for June 28th at 11 p.m. In this report, we can see that all objects are shown with rise and set times computed for a flat horizon. If the selected location for the report has a local horizon model defined, we can have Deep Sky Planner calculate rise and set times for that local horizon. So I'll select the AA test location, which does have a local horizon model attached to it. To have the rise and set times calculated for this location's horizon, I must check the Apply Local Horizon Model, if available, checkbox. Since this checkbox controls whether rise and set times are calculated for the horizon model or a flat horizon, it's easy to switch between the two calculations. Note that the rise and set times have changed in the report. We can investigate an object's circumstances by viewing the daily altitude graph for it. The daily altitude graph shows some lines and icons. The blue line represents the object's altitude over the course of the day. The green line represents the local horizon model. You should notice that the shape of the horizon line has changed a bit. This is because Horizon Model Editor plots altitude against azimuth, whereas the altitude graph plots altitude against time, and azimuth does not change at a constant rate over time. You can turn the horizon line on and off by clicking the checkbox. The yellow circles represent the altitude of the moon over the course of the day. And you can turn these off with this checkbox. Finally, the white and gray gradient represents sun and twilight, sunlight and twilight. These can also be toggled on and off with this checkbox. All of the graph elements are defined in the graphs legend. Using M2 as an example, we can see that it rises over the local horizon just after midnight and it sets before 9 a.m. If we return to the tabular report, we can see those numbers are correct here for rise and set. Now let's consider the second use of a local horizon model, which is filtering objects out of a report 
when they are obscured from view by the local horizon. We'll continue to use a deep sky report for the Messier catalog for June 28th at 11 p.m. We'll shrink the report pane so we can see the control tabs. And as you can see, we have June 28th at 11 p.m. To filter objects out of the report that are obscur obscured by the local horizon, go to the Sky Position tab, and we need to click the Local Horizon Model, if available, button to apply the filter. Note that if you click this radio button and the selected location has no horizon model, the filter does not eliminate any objects from the report. Now we'll run the search again with the filter enabled. And you can see that the number of objects in the report has changed. If we check the daily altitude graph for M3, we can see that it is above the horizon at 11 p.m. To summarize the capability of the local horizon feature, you can control its effects on reports individually. That is, you can control the effect on the calculation of rise and set times, and you can control filtering. These are controlled separately so that you can get any combination of control that you need. That does it for this video about using local horizon models. Thanks for watching.